Uh, today's webinar is Jumpstart Your Career While You're in College, and will be presented by Kim Doherty of Doherty & Associates, Inc. Kim is an information specialist and also does career coaching, so she is uh, the perfect one to have present this to you today. Um, with that, I will turn, uh, actually before I turn it over to Kim, there will be opportunities to ask questions. If you use the little dashboard that's on the upper right-hand side of your screen and click on the white arrow in the orange box, you'll see a area at the bottom called Questions. At any time, please go ahead and feel free to type a question and hit the Send to Staff button. And then throughout the presentation and again at the end, um, I'll read the questions and Kim will uh, respond to those for you. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Kim Doherty. Go ahead, Kim. Thank you, and hello, everyone. And I appreciate the fact that you guys are giving up your lunch hour uh, for this webinar. So we'll try to make it really, really valuable for you. Um, what we're going to focus on today is how to find uh, the best way to create value, additional value out of your degree. So what happens is when we're going through school, we tend to focus on what things we need to do to get through our courses, what we need to do to get our grades, to pass the test, that sort of thing. But what you also might want to keep in mind in terms of the value that you're going to get from your degree is that while the skill set you'll be getting is very, very valuable, at the same time you're getting that skill set, you could also be building a platform for your future career success. So that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to look at 10 tactics you can use to jumpstart your career while you're in college. So leading off, tactic number one is going to be setting your own career agenda. So when you start college, everybody has an agenda for you. Your college has an idea of what they think you should be doing. Your instructors have their agenda. The profession often has a, an agenda for you in terms of credentialing and, and the body of knowledge that you must have mastered before you work in your field. And sometimes your employer or your significant other, your mother-in-law, your parents, all these people have things that they think you should be doing, and, and that's completely natural. It's human nature. Everybody wants to tell everybody else what to do. But your goal is to understand that it's going to be up to you to create your own agenda, which helps you to have the career that you want. So while you are working hard on those courses, getting those A's, um, getting to know your instructors, you're going to have your own agenda going on as well. So this first tactic is where you lay out what you're going to accomplish in addition to getting your degree. You're going to start building those career opportunities for when you graduate with your degree in hand. And, and the good news here is, for those of you who are now panicking, um, this isn't sort of like an additional load of things that you have to do. Uh, while you're already doing your coursework, this is using your existing opportunities to sort of double up on their value. So you're going to start your personal career agenda. First thing is to realize you're the one in charge. So that means you're the one making all of the really important decisions. That means you're not going to let somebody else decide for you what your career should look like. You're not going to blame anybody else for the results of the decisions that you're making. And you're not going to wait for somebody else to do something to create an opportunity for you because you're going to have the skills and will have laid the groundwork to have already created those opportunities yourself. OK, so then if you're thinking about your career agenda, your, your personal career agenda, what goals will you focus on? Your goals are your big picture. So you'll probably have some of your own right off the bat, the kinds of things that drove you to think about going back to school. 
But in addition, I would suggest you also focus on what I would call the big four. And those are, one, building your business skills. Two, building your professional network. Three, building your brand, your professional brand. And four, gathering as much information about your profession as possible. So we're going to talk about all of those some more and how you do those sorts of things. But those, from my perspective, are the four areas where if you start laying the groundwork now, by the time you graduate, you will be graduating into great career opportunities. So you've got your goals. Now you're going to figure out for your agenda what actions are you going to take in support of those goals. So your actions might focus on things like this. For the business skills you want to learn, your action might be uh, mastering business tools like spreadsheets or PowerPoint while you're doing your coursework. So that's another additional thing that you're going to say, OK, I have this assignment. I'm going to use it to learn this tool. Another skill you might want to learn would be uh, learning how to give effective group presentations. Another one might be learning how to work with or lead teams, because all three of these areas are in high demand from employers. OK, people you want to build connections with, this is building your professional network or professional community. You've got a target-rich environment when you are getting a degree. So you want to connect with your teachers. You want to get to know them and let them know you. You want to connect with guest speakers, with your classmates who could be colleagues in your future, or even someone that you've had an informational interview with. Um, this is a great opportunity to start building your professional network in the course of going through your degree program because you will have so many opportunities and exposures to new people. Uh, actions for the professional reputation you want to build. These are around your classroom behaviors. Are you coming in with energy? Um, are people excited to see you? Uh, your interactions with classmates and faculty and administrators. The, well, even when you're not thinking about how you're building a professional brand, how you work with people, how you respond to people, whether or not you're aware of it, you are building your professional brand. And then lastly, your online presence. And I am hoping that everyone in this webinar right now has a LinkedIn profile. And I'm going to say, if you don't, I want you to all promise me that you will have one done by the end of the weekend, because this is where you start building how potential employers see you. So uh, that would be working on your professional reputation. Those are some actions you might want to take. And then in terms of career exploration, the, the two big things here are what questions do you want to ask about your career potential or your potential career? And then who can you find to help you answer those questions? That might be things like what areas of this profession are expanding or contracting? What state has the most job openings in this field? What's the salary range? Those kinds of questions, this is where you start exploring that information so that when you graduate, you know right where you want to go. You know just what you want to target. So in your personal career agenda for your action items, you're going to note those questions. And then you're going to note how you're going to answer them. Okay. Second tactic, multipurpose your assignments. This is one of my favorite ones because one of the things that you will find, and I hope you really take advantage of it, is your student status causes people who would normally not give you the time of day to be willing to talk to you for hours on end. It, it's an amazing phenomenon. But one of the things, I, I also um, teach adjunct at another university, and one of the things I always tell my students is, target the people that you would like to get to know and figure out an excuse 
to call them or email and say, hello, I am a student doing XYZ, and I'm currently researching um, trends in XYZ ABC. And I think that you would have interesting insights into this, and so would you be willing to meet with me and give me some feedback? Most people will say, if you were not a student, would say, I'm sorry, I'm really busy. But there is something in human nature that if you say you're a student, people are very, very willing to respond. So tactic number two is basically use your student status whenever possible. So as we just discussed, one of the first ways to use it is to use your assignments to connect with people that might be potential employers, they might be potential clients if you're going to go independent, or they might be potential colleagues who, after meeting you, realize that you'd be a perfect fit for a job opening they have. So think about doing interviews with people. Think about group projects as a way to create stronger bonds or relationships with colleagues, classmates, that you really admire and, and you would like to have as part of your professional universe. Um, use assignments to do industry research, to find out more about companies that you're interested in or parts of your profession that you'd like to explore more. Or possibly, if the school allows this, um, consider doing independent study projects with a field mentor because this is a great way for you to find m more information but also to really establish a bond and get your skills in front of someone before you're having to ask them for a job. Another way to use your assignments is to have them help you build your professional portfolio. And a professional portfolio means a lot of different things depending on how it's being used. But basically, your professional portfolio is a collection of documents or project work or other indicators of your skills and your strengths. So um, if you've done a great assignment on something, then you want to find a way to put that into your portfolio. You want to repackage it, um, perhaps as an article that could be in your portfolio. You want to use these things to say, I don't just know this stuff. I know how to apply this knowledge and apply this information. So that could include group projects that you've worked on, research and especially analysis that you've done, outstanding papers, um, and other examples of your ability to be a valuable asset to an organization. You may want to turn these assignments, your, your best work, into an e-portfolio, which is an online portfolio, which is becoming a very popular um, approach for a lot of people now. Or if you have your LinkedIn profile, you can link to documents that you feel demonstrate uh, your, your best work. But also, even if they're not online and visible online to people, being able to talk about uh, an assignment that was extraordinary or a special opportunity or unique in some way, being able to talk about that in an interview is another way of using your assignments to help create job opportunities for you. Because your whole goal is to let um, potential employers know that you can be an impact player for them, that you have value to contribute. Another way to multipurpose your assignments is to use them to create visibility. So, you can, for example, turn a really great assignment into a conference presentation. Uh, state conferences or, or sort of national organizations at the state level usually have state conferences. They're always looking for cool student projects that they can showcase because they're trying to bring students into the profession. So think about repurposing an assignment as a conference presentation or consider turning it into an article 
and submitting it as a student contribution to one of your professional association publications. Uh, consider it as a potential blog post, either if you have your own blog, excerpting it and putting it into your own blog, or contacting someone else in your profession who has a blog and offer to guest blog with that post on their site. Um, either way brings you visibility within the profession, and it brings you visibility to potential employers who, when they go to look for you online, will see that information. Another way to use it to create visibility, I think we mentioned uh, earlier, was to put it on your LinkedIn profile. But also, if you on LinkedIn are a member of any of the professional groups on LinkedIn, you can post as a discussion thread the information that you've just done some research on XYZ, you thought the topic would be interesting to the group members, they can see it here at this location and then have a linking URL. So another way to create visibility from work that you quite frankly have already done once, and this is just doubling up the benefit of the work that you did and helping it have you having it help you build your career platform. Okay, tactic number three, always my favorite, create your own learning assignments. Um, as you work through your degree program's core curriculum, you're going to be expected to master a substantial amount of job-specific knowledge before you complete your degree. These are your job skills. However, in addition to that knowledge base, you'll also want to build some key business skills. Uh, these are the ones that will help you build your career opportunities while you can practice them in a safe environment. And this is the great thing about going through school, is that you can fall on your face numerous times, and the only people who know this pretty much are your fellow classmates, and they've been there and done that, so it's a pretty safe environment. So what are some of the skills you're going to be wanting to learn while you are doing sort of your course assignments. First one is to learn how to write for the business world. Most of the time we're in school, we are writing to academic standards, and that's absolutely appropriate. That's, that's what schools need to be doing, um, and, it, and I completely support that. However, when you graduate and move into the business world, academic writing does not work as well. So. What you need to learn how to do is to write very clearly and very, very concisely. So it means organizing your ideas in a logical order that clearly states your finding with the least amount of wording possible. It means stating your key points with confidence and backing them up with appropriate documentation. So in the business world, you don't do a literature survey and, and note all of the people who have done research in this field. You have a conclusion. You have a, a key point. You have a decision. And then you can document, document that to a degree. But the point is the um, judgment, the opinion, the idea that they are looking for in the business world. So, uh, in the background that I come out of, which is uh, academic writing to the nth degree as an information specialist, what we have to move away from is instead of providing sort of all, here's all the information that I found on this topic, we move into this is just enough information to help you make the decision you need to make. So as you are going through your program, if you don't have opportunities to write like that, take your assignments and just practice on a couple of them. So this becomes a familiar uh, drill for you. OK. Next learning assignment, learn how you learn. One of the things you're going to find out when you enter the profession is that the quote unquote shelf life of knowledge, or how long what you've learned is still value, shortens every year. So because of that, one of your most important business skills is going to be the ability to learn on demand. So while you're in college, experiment with how you most quickly learn new stuff. 
when you start a new course, how do you master that knowledge? Do you outline it? Do you um, record it? Do you look at online tutorials? What you want to figure out, and this is one of the most valuable things you can have as a takeaway from your program, is how you personally learn quickly and effectively, because everybody's got a different way of approaching this. OK, next tactic, explore how many different ways your skills can be used. So no matter what degree you're going for, there are probably about 25 different ways, at a minimum, that you could deploy that skill set. So this tactic is all about exploring those options. Because even though you may start with a specific job, the likelihood is, and, and these are, I think, government statistics, you're going to change jobs at least seven times in the course of your career. And that's actually an old statistic. Now they're saying people may be changing jobs as often as two years, every two years. So your goal is to figure out, OK, so I could do this with my degree. I could do that thing over there. I could switch and do that thing over there. Um, one of the reasons that this is so important for you is that even if the profession doesn't change, and we know that it's going to anyway, your life circumstances and your interests are going to change. So you want to be able to be as flexible as possible with the opportunities that you want to pursue. So how do we do that? First thing is explore your profession. Um, you want to check out some of the key resources that will give you a good overview of the types of work. And at the end of this presentation, I have a list of some of those. And then you also, here is using your student status again, consider joining the most important or relevant professional association in your field because this gives you access to all of its members. And you can contact these people and ask them about their careers. By the way, if you're a student, you usually get a huge discount on joining, so it's, it's a great deal. So your goal is to get a good sense of all the different ways that people um, use the same skills you'll be graduating with to develop their own career paths, because what you're looking for is how many different ways or career paths could I develop for this degree. OK, next is exploring. Hello? Next is exploring alternative types of work. And this means um, in my fantasy life. Hello, can you still hear me? Yes. Um, OK. Sorry about that. I was getting a signal on this end. OK, so exploring alternative types of work is, is this a job that you could do on a cruise ship? Is this a job that you could do and travel? Is this a job that you could do telecommuting? So you want to look at how many different ways this job could be um, done in alternative formats. So one way to do that is to connect with any guest speakers that you have, see what they're doing. Again, check out members of your professional association. Read your professional magazines uh, for profiles of people who have unusual jobs. And not to go overboard on LinkedIn, but one of the benefits of joining uh, groups in LinkedIn is so you have access to their members. You can go through and look at their job titles. You can see what their jobs are. If you see any that look really cool to you, reach out and ask those people about their careers. OK, tactic five, explore what type of work you might enjoy. This is based on your own personal work preferences. Uh, so you can, when you have an opportunity to do so, find work that, that best aligns with your personal characteristics. So your job is to take every opportunity to both connect with people who can tell you more about career paths, possible career paths, and also start figuring out what your own preferences look like. So one question might be, what type of organization might be of interest to you? Some questions, do you like to work with a lot of structure or in a more freewheeling environment? Do you like working independently or as part of a team? Do you like a lot of public interaction, or are you more comfortable working behind the scenes? Do you thrive in a high-intensity workplace or prefer one that is relatively calm, stable, and predictable, 
And oh, by the way, if you can find one of those, let me know. Um, also, do you like working for a large organization or a small one, or for a, a for-profit or non-profit? These are the kinds of questions that as you're going through this program and you are learning more about the profession, you want to be asking yourself, how do I feel about this? Does this seem like something I'd want to do? Another question here is, do you want to be an employee? Do you want to be an independent? Or do you maybe want to do a little bit of everything? So for example, um, if you work on contract, that's one option. You're not quite an employee, but you're kind of independent. Or you might want to work independently and have your own freelance business. Or you might want to work as an employee, but maybe do some independent work on the side. Um, the reason you might want to think about that is that you never know when things are going to change with your employer, and so it's just sort of a plan B in case things go south. So again, think about how this, how you react to these kinds of questions. Okay, tactic number six, start a career journal to record your journey and your progress. So this is all about getting you from where you are right now to where you want to be in the future. It's about turning those goals that we talked about into accomplishments. So think about your career journal as your coach, as your record of your progress, um, a reminder of what you need to do next to stay on track, and even to some extent sort of a diary and confidant, just recording your reactions, your thoughts, your questions, your concerns, that sort of thing. So career questions that you might want to cover. Uh, what career paths sound interesting to you? What alternative work might you want to explore? What career ideas do you want to learn more about? Who might you want to connect with both inside and outside of your degree program? You want to record career action items. Um, this, this is where, as my dad used to say, the rubber hits the road. So this is where you turn, I'm thinking about this, to I'm going to do something about this. So some examples here might be, I'm going to start building my professional network, and so I'm going to attend one professional meeting a month. Another one might be to learn more about career paths, I'm going to schedule one informational interview a month. Third one might be, I'll schedule an appointment with the Career Center Services person to explore the college's job placement resources. So the idea is to make it actionable and measurable. So I am going to accomplish this one thing by this date, and then you're going to record here what you found out so that you've got an ongoing process of building information about your career opportunities. Okie doke. Tactic number seven, my favorite, make the most of the school's information resources. Anyone who is going to college usually has two things that most people totally ignore, and they are actually the two most valuable aspects of your degree program. Or I shouldn't say that. They're two of the most valuable aspects. Those two things are the library and the career services center. So one of the things you're going to want to do is to take a lunch hour or take some spare time in between classes and become best buddies with your librarian. Because your campus librarian, whether online or on campus, knows really cool stuff. They have incredible resources uh, to do research about companies, uh, to help you find books about careers in your field, to help you find and get access to magazines to help you research industry trends. They can help you identify research reports about your careers, the ones that either say, oh my gosh, everyone should be going into this field because it's going to be huge, or the ones that say, oh my gosh, think about something else because this is not going to be there in 10 years. These guys see those reports. They can help you find them. So they have tools that can do incredibly valuable stuff for, you, for your career. So I would say, that's your first best buddy on campus. 
Your second best buddy is the career services people. Uh, a lot of what I do is working with students who have recently graduated from college and have no clue how to get a job. And the first question I always say is, huh, what have your career services people said to you? And, and what resources did you check with them? And they always, literally every single one looks at me and says, huh, I should have gone to the career services center, shouldn't I? And my reaction is, yes, you should have. These people have the keys to the kingdom when it comes to getting a job and building your career. For example, they have relationships with employers. So if you're looking for an internship or a job, they're the people who can recommend you and can put you in touch with those individuals. They have databases of articles about careers and professions and industries. They can provide coaching for writing resumes and cover letters. They can provide coaching for interviews. They can brainstorm job ideas with you. They can provide recommendations and referrals. And sometimes the, the, the thing they do that's most valuable is they can provide encouragement. Because they've been through this, they've seen it a lot of times, they can help you. So in addition to making sure that you get your LinkedIn profile done, make sure that you connect with the career services people because they are one of the most valuable aspects of those tuition dollars that you are paying. OK, tactic number eight, practice doing scary stuff. As I mentioned, school is a great place to try out new skills, because even though you may fall on your face trying them out, all of your classmates have probably also done, so, done the same thing, and so they're not going to be having a nervous breakdown about it. You don't, you're not in a position of putting your job in jeopardy. And so you want to try as much stuff as possible and practice and practice and practice it in a safe environment while you can. So keep in mind that in terms of your career, one of the most important things you can do is to keep growing. And now is the time for you to make that a part of basically just your DNA, your professional DNA. So start pushing the boundaries of your comfort zone while you're still in the safe environment of college. And then you'll have the confidence you need in those new skills that you've been practicing when you go into the workplace and then you can deploy them beautifully because you're not afraid to do it. You know how to do it. You've been practicing in college. So for example, making classroom presentations, everybody's worst nightmare come true. Um, everybody who is nervous about public speaking, raise your hand. All hands went up, including mine. Public speaking is one of the most frightening things anyone faces. As a matter of fact, in a list of things that scare people to death, public speaking is at the top of the list. So college is the perfect place to move beyond sort of the anxiety attack level and practice pushing beyond that fear by trying this sort of activity out. So I would recommend that the smart move is to take every opportunity you have to practice your public speaking skills. That might be by making a, um, uh, an oral presentation in a class, or it might be belonging to one of the student groups and making presentations to the students. Uh, it might be making, as we, spoke, as we talked about earlier, making a presentation at a local conference, professional conference. Practice this as much as you can because the more you practice this, the more you become familiar with the experience of having that sort of pre-presentation uh, jittery feeling, and then knowing, oh, OK, yeah, I know. I always feel like this before I stand up and speak. And then I start speaking, and it's OK. So your goal is to do it so often that you become familiar with how it works for you. So I. If you are able to learn how to speak in public, your career will grow leaps and bounds because you will be the person who becomes visible. 
You will be the person who becomes known as the expert on whatever topic you're speaking on. You will be the person who is sufficiently confident to be able to address a group without having a nervous breakdown. And so right there, this has distinguished you and given you a competitive edge in your career. OK, so next one, practice making decisions and learning your decision-making style. Making um, big decisions is pretty tough for all of us because we tend to second-guess ourselves as soon as we've made those decisions. But if you sort of pay attention while you're going through uh, your program to how you make decisions most effectively, then you can do it more rapidly when it really counts when you're in a business situation. So your goal is to get to the point that you can quickly make thoughtful decisions and have confidence that they're the best decision based on the information in hand, keeping in mind that there are no perfect decisions. So I would say start with small decisions if this is an unfamiliar drill for you and see what approach feels most natural to you. Is it that you trust your gut? Is it that you make a list of pros and cons? Is it that you gather a lot of relevant information? I, I tend to make decisions by research, researching them to death. Um, and that's my way of convincing myself to have confidence in the decision that I'm making. You may have a completely different way but your goal while you're going through the program is to figure out what your decision-making style is so you know you can rely on it throughout your career. OK, next, <laughs> uh, group projects, everyone's favorite. Group projects are a great opportunity to practice your teamwork skills. They usually make most people crazy. But the reality is, when you get into the workplace, you're going to be doing a ton of team projects, which are basically the business version of group projects. So when you have an opportunity to participate in this sort of activity, I would jump at it, and I would learn how to do it well. I would learn um, how to work with people in a way that, that uh, supports their goals, that allows them to deliver their best effort, that allows people to uh, feel engaged. Virtual projects, team projects, group projects are difficult because it's hard to marshal both per people's personalities and all of the work that needs to be done. But if you can learn to do this well while you are in school, and then if in an interview situation with a potential employer, you can casually mention, one of the things I enjoyed the most about working on group projects with my classmates was X, Y, Z. You have just signaled to that potential employer that you've aced teamwork, that you can be a strong contributor in a group environment. And these days, that's pretty critical. Tactic number nine. Practice positive expectations throughout your courses and class engagements. I'm going to say that I have so much respect for anyone who is going through college and working and often juggling family responsibilities that I, I am sort of in awe of people's ability to do this. But because it is sort of so overwhelming, you are juggling so many things, it's tough to keep a positive attitude sometimes. And yet, if you are able to do that, and if you focus on that, it will help you immeasurably both today and as you move through your career. So as part of that, decide you won't get stuck. People get stuck when they find themselves in a situation that's making them crazy. We've all been there. And they assume that the only thing that will make it better is for someone or something else to change. The reality is pretty much nothing is going to get better until you take action.
have that happen. And sort of, as someone pointed out to me, complaining about your boss to your friends and coworkers does not count as action. There is a great line um, by Albert Einstein that says, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And that's kind of the pretty much, pretty much kind of the same definition for being stuck, that you're doing the same thing over and over again. It's making you miserable, but it's not getting better. So keep in mind that you are the only one who has the power and the smarts to change the situation. School is a great place to practice that habit of creating the change that you need to have in your life so that it, it gets you unstuck. And then when you're ready to go into a professional situation, you'll have the confidence to use that skill in any situation. And, and sometimes that can be you're working uh, in a job that need, you need to get unstuck from or you are working for a boss uh, who is problematic. And, and so you need to practice how you deal with those situations knowing that you are the only one who can change them and improve them. Next point, decide you're not going to take things personally. You're all going to be going into careers. Pretty much most of you will be working for businesses of some sort. but in Every organization, that organization is going to make decisions based on business circumstances. And all of us need to understand that it's not about us. It's about the business. So if they do something, if your employer does something that harms you personally, like a layoff, you need to let go of being angry about it and taking it personally and instead shift that energy into a positive, um, forward-looking response. So while you're in school, here, here's my mantra I would encourage you to practice. One, most people are completely oblivious in their thoughts and their actions. Two, so if they just did something that completely ticked me off, Three, they did not do it on purpose to make me miserable. Four, they're just normal, preoccupied, clueless human beings. I have done more things in my lifetime by being clueless than I even want to think about. But other people have done similar things to me as well. I don't take it personally because I know they didn't mean to harm me. They just weren't thinking. So I think you will have much more positive energy if you basically just lighten up and let it go. OK, and this one is key for all of us, no matter where we are in our careers. Decide you'll always get up one more time. All of us, whether it's in school or our personal lives or our careers, we're all going to hit setbacks. We all get knocked down in life. but what I would encourage you to practice while you're going through college is your ability to get back up. This is the heart of personal and professional resiliency. And resiliency is a, a phrase you're going to hear more and more in your careers uh, because things change so quickly. It's a characteristic that is incre in increasing demand among employers. And if you go through college with this in mind, your ability to point to instances in your, your school years where you've severed a setback and learned valuable lessons from it and then bounced back with commitment and engagement, when you tell those stories to potential employers, it marks you as a, a candidate who can be relied on if difficult circumstances hit. So that personal resiliency, that getting back up after you've been knocked down, is a huge, huge personal and career strength to strive for. Tactic 10, as you progress through your program, take a leadership role in your career and your future. This is about self-leadership and knowing that your life and your career and your future belong to you and that your job is to take responsibility for them. So specifically, that means that you'll take responsibility for your choices, 
Take responsibility for your outcomes, the results of those choices, and believe in your success. One of the biggest challenges that we have is to assume that our failures are because we screwed up and our successes were simply good luck. If you go through a college program and are able to succeed, to make it through, you have achieved a phenomenal success. And you need to understand that that success happened because of your hard work and your commitment and your belief in yourself. So your job is to believe in your successes and take that confidence forward with you so that you graduate not just with a degree, but with the knowledge that you are capable of doing amazing things. So one last slide. Here are the resources for career research. Um, Occupational Outlook Handbook will give you an overview of sort of a, a broad profession. Career Guide to Industries will tell you about specific career paths. It's a great resource. It's free. It's your tax dollars at work. Gateway to Associations is um, a resource for finding out what is the professional associations are in your field and then connecting with them. And then the last one is to simply go into your preferred search engine, usually that's Google, but whatever preference you have, and type in the words careers in and then whatever field you're interested in. And those four resources should provide a lot of information about whatever career you're interested in. Thank you so much for letting me chat, and good luck with your careers. Here is my contact information, and also I put my LinkedIn profile at the bottom. So for those of you who aren't sure what a LinkedIn profile would look like, this is a place to start. It is, it's not perfect, but at least it's sort of filled in and will give you an idea of what to put there. So thank you very much. Thanks so much, Kim. Um, this is a great time. If you have any questions after Kim's presentation, to utilize that little dashboard and go ahead and type your question in and hit submit question to staff. Um, I know I've had a couple of questions about having this presentation available at a later date. We are recording this, and we will send the link to the recording out to everyone. Um, we'll just give it a minute or two here to see if anybody else has any other questions to answer. Kim, thanks so much for your time today and for putting this together with for us. It was a great presentation. Oh, it was my pleasure. I'm not really seeing any questions come through. So I guess at this point, then, we're all set with the presentation. Oh, here we go. Hang on one second here. Someone would like to know that the question is, in Take Leadership, what are the three points? In Take Leadership. What are the three? Take a leadership role? Probably, uh, in, yes. Um, OK. I'm very quickly zipping through my slides here so I remember what I have there. Excuse me. OK. I, I will um, I talk about this as I'm going back to my slides. Taking leadership means Basically, you become the key uh, active individual in your life. We
was easy for me. It wasn't easy for you. You have done an incredible thing. You are achieving successes in your life. You need to acknowledge those and say, yeah, I'm actually pretty damn terrific. I have lots of successes. So those were the three self-leadership items. All right. That really seems to be the last question that we have. Uh, again, as I said, we will send out the link to the recorded presentation to everyone so that you can view this at a later time.